I've always been the kind of person to ask how something works, the internal mechanisms, the physics behind an object, and the Ultra Kills pistol kind of really hits that area where it's like, how does this thing work? Why does it work the way it does? And why does it look the way it does? Well, what is the piercer? The revolver is a railgun hybrid weapon that uses electrical pulses to fire microscopic shards of metal at really high speeds. This makes it really good and very reliable in the heat of combat, since making energy is a lot easier than consistently needing to find bullets, and since you're a robot, you're already making energy from all the blood that you absorb within the universe itself. I don't know how efficient blood energy conversion would be. So let's break it down. A rail cannon is a linear motor weapon that uses two rails to launch a projectile or piece of metal at really high speeds. This exists in real life and they're really interesting. Militaries all over the world kind of use them, but they require a lot of energy. Around 18 megajoules. If you don't know how much that is, it's about how much your house would use in a day. And this is an American house. So this uses a lot more energy, but since due to physics, the less mass you have, the less energy you need to input into something to make it go really, really quickly. That does work in theory, but as we're gonna get into it, it doesn't work as well as it might. So face value, this weapon should work. Going to the lore, here's the real issue. It talks about recharging batteries, whatever those are, I don't know. Like a battery that makes energy. That, that doesn't really make sense if you know what a battery is. They're meant to store energy. Even chemical batteries, which I thought made energy, actually don't, they just trap electricity. So batteries are meant for long-term storage. This is meant to send out energy slowly over time. That's why you see it in your phone or your computer or any kind of electronic that's going to be used day to day. What I actually think is going on is it's using a capacitor. A capacitor is for quick storage of energy and quick release. We may or may not use these in the future as batteries themselves, but more or less, it's going to act way better for a weapon like this. On top of this, a capacitor is also more reliable and degrades less. With this in mind, we can can understand where the revolving chamber comes into play. It's more or less we're using one capacitor than swapping over to the other one. It's a very elegant system and in a universe where a battery recharges somehow, it might actually work. The engineering is there, but with our physics in mind, it really doesn't make a lot of sense. In universe, V1 makes energy from blood. That's how the whole like blood is fuel thing comes from. And let's say it's enough to output for all of its weapon systems. I don't know if it's enough energy that it outputs to where it could succeed successfully charge these rails. But let's say this does work and there is enough energy that it's outputting. This could work. Although this doesn't solve the biggest issue. When electronics like your computer or lights they give off heat. That's just kind of how things work. Energy goes into heat and we usually use fans or the open air for cooling. But nowhere on this weapon do I see any kind of cooling apparatus. Air coolant is the easiest and most common form of coolant since it just requires a fan to take heat away through the air. But this requires a fan. <laughs> it's kind of an issue because I don't see a fan anywhere on this. It is most likely happening is passive coolant where you just kind of leave it exposed to the air. This can work. And if you add a sort of thin apparatus like this, it could uh, increase the passive cooling abilities a lot further. Depending on the efficiency of the material, I don't know what it's made out of. I'm gonna guess it's nickel or tungsten. It could have enough passive cooling to actually make a real life version work, but I don't have a real life version to actually test and we would already have the science behind it, etc., etc. So I'm thinking it is passive cooling. That's kind of how I think this weapon would work under our physics. But now that we know more or less how the weapon functions, we can now understand how it breaks physics with its variations. There are two weapon variations of this. There is the initial piercer weapon. You can charge up a shot and it'll shoot three uh, shots at once. There's the coin revolver where you shoot a coin up into the air and then you actually hit the weapon. Or you could use the sharpshooter, which bounces off of walls. If you know what this does, um, yeah, anything that hits a hard surface or any surface for that matter, will give 90% of its kinetic energy into the wall or item that you've hit. That's a lot better, but nowhere near what we see in game where the projectile actually gains damage. Yeah, you heard that right. It gains damage instead of losing all the energy and making it kind of a useless shrapnel. But let's ask the actual question. Could we make this real? What breaks, what works, and what needs to be modified? Most of the concept and ideas are real and do work similarly in real life. Real guns have two rails. This is kind of emulated into the sort of shape of the weapon where the front of the barrel is kind of this like boxy and cube shape. So that could be where the two rails live. This fits the construction. 
It has projectiles made of metal. Most enemies you're around are made of metal, so it could be reasonable that you could find some kind of scrap of metal out there. Only issue is the size of the metal. It's described as being microscopic. This will do one of two things, depending on how fast the actual projectile is moving. It could either disintegrate into harmless shards of metal, or if it's going fast enough, it could fuse with the entire air. Yeah, that's that's kind of what we do with uh, particle accelerators is we move really, really small objects together so fast that they literally fuse together and become something different. I think it's really funny because <laughs> it kind of does glow red if you hit a coin. So it might be fusing and output more energy, but that's just kind of headcanon for me. That's not a great thing though. Uh, the only way to really fix this is to have a larger uh, different kind of projectile. Instead of being microscopic, make it like probably a couple millimeters or even like a few hundred nanometers. Next is the issue of the cylinders only holding charge for a few seconds and then releasing energy enough to fire a projectile. This makes heat. I've talked about this before, but it doesn't look like it's exporting heat very well. If you charge the weapon, it actually slows it down and stops for a couple seconds. So clearly something is happening within the weapon to make it malfunction or overheat in a sense. This is a small issue so it doesn't seem too too bad and you might have to like repair the revolver every now and then but it's fine so how do we actually fix this and the description isn't the most amazing thing i know hikita is not an engineer by any means but i wanted to throw my hat in the ring and actually explain what happens within the weapon and how we could actually build this heat is your biggest issue this happens when electrons rub against a resistor this is kind of anything that's kind of physical you know the desk uh my computer what have you in this case it is the metal frame or capacitors within the chamber it's using the energy and that's being converted into heat through friction it kind of just gets hot. We could fix this, and this is theoretical science, by cooling down the material so much that the individual molecules stop moving completely. This has to be somewhere around negative 200 degrees for it to reach this thing called superconductive. It's when the molecules basically stop moving around and the electrons are really easy to move. They don't interact with any kind of material and it's very, very difficult to do this. But let's say in the universe that Ultra Cold takes place in, they've found some kind of superconducting material. This means it would be superconductive at room temperature, which would be really crazy and really, really useful for everything we do. Everything that we use has energy. Everything that we want to use will use some kind of energy. A superconducting material loses no energy whatsoever and could infinitely go without giving off heat. On top of that, the magnets would also become stronger due to how electrons basically make electric fields. In theory, this weapon could exist if the description was modified a little bit. Let's say the piercer requires some kind of external power source. In this case, V1's output of energy from the blood that it intakes, which requires some charge beforehand before each use. So it's like you're reloading the weapon, but in this case, you're charging it instead of adding new bullets to it or cartridges or whatever. And this would be very, very useful. And we also need to change the size of the projectile to being a couple millimeters instead of microscopic. That could work in our real world, but we don't have anything kind of the size of a pistol. It's more or less big, you know, rifle sized weaponry, or you see giant cannons on like giant boats or whatever. The issue is the amount of energy that they use. So a superconductive material would basically solve that entire issue. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would give me a like, a sub, and a comment on any kind of weapon that you would want me to kind of explain or try to make real in real life, uh, leave it down in the comments below. I also wanted to go over something else that I didn't get through in the rest of the script. Basically, there is the alternate revolvers. They kind of are larger. They deal double the damage, which it goes from one to two. That's still double, which is a lot of damage at ultra kill and is a direct upgrade basically, except on the coin and sharpshooter variants for some reason. I don't know why, but since it is a larger frame, it probably just has larger electronic pieces and all that. So it kind of works pretty well for in-universe explanations and stuff. Larger electronics, more powerful, etc. Etc. I just wanted to do that before somebody asked, could the alternate revolver working in real life? But uh, again, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.